Hey guys, welcome back to the Rusty Beauty Shop. And today we're gonna keep going here with the 1994 Jeep YJ, which we recently acquired. And in the last two episodes we weren't able to start it because we determined that the fuel pump was bad, but once we fixed the fuel pump, it turned out that we don't have spark as well. And that led to uh, the ECU, the engine control unit which obviously is bad because we don't even have a check engine light when we turn the ignition on which is supposed to come on for a second and then turn off so hopefully in this episode we're going to be able to eliminate that issue as well and maybe the car is going to start let's see all right guys it's a few days later and uh Unfortunately, I can't be away from home for too long because things are keeping me home. Anyways, I took that time to do a little bit more research and it turns out that this is a very common problem for Jeeps, for YJs especially, I don't know, for the rest of them. Like I said, I'm not a Jeep guy, but I'm turning into one. <laughs> so anyways, there's a lot of information on YouTube. Many people share their troubles with that and it turns out that this is a really common problem with Jeeps when there's no spark, the injectors are not working, the fuel pump and stuff like that. Well, our fuel pump, we figured that the pump was bad anyways, but uh, in most of the cases, the ECU is the problem, like I suggested, and it turns out I was right. So there are three capacitors on these, this particular ECU, um, and these three capacitors may go bad. So today, I'm in the shop for literally five minutes. I came to pick up something, but I'm also gonna take a few minutes to take out this ECU and I'm gonna try and fix it at home. I already ordered the capacitors. Uh, three are needed for here, but I ordered a set of five. They're very expensive. They're like $7 for the set of five. So I ordered them and I'm expecting them to be at home when I get home actually, because it was one day free delivery of Amazon. So anyways, the problem is here, remember last time I got in trouble with this screw. It didn't want to come out. So I sprayed it with WD-40 and now I'm hoping that it's going to come out. But if it doesn't, I'm just going to grind the head off. I'm not going to bother wasting my time with it. I'm just going to grind it off so we can take out the reservoir for the washer fluid. And then we can unplug the computer and take it with us home so I can work on it at home so i'm not gonna keep you here i'm just gonna do whatever i need to do uh, and i'm gonna take the ecu out it's like literally you need to take out this screw then this reservoir comes out then there's two screws here here and there that are holding the ecu there must be one on the bottom too but looks like this one doesn't have the one on the bottom so it's only these two well i did have to grind the screw because it was a uh, it was really stuck there, so here it is. So we're gonna remove that later. We're gonna take care of that later. So here it is, the ECU is out. So we only need to unplug it. And of course, first we're gonna inspect the plug. I don't wanna, I don't know if I'm gonna, yeah, I can do it one-handed here. This apart, I don't see any evidence of corrosion here. So I guess, our serious problem, our real problem is inside here. Okay, so here we are at home on my dining room table because I don't have a shop at home. I actually have kind of limited tools at home, some screwdrivers, pliers and stuff like that. So I hope I don't need anything specialized because at home I don't have too many tools. Anyway, so now we can see why the bottom bolt wasn't holding when it was on the firewall, because the clip came off. Okay. <laughs> nice and clean inside. Anyways, we should keep this and probably we're gonna be able to reuse it. Meanwhile, my capacitors came, so let's see now how we're gonna open this. Um, one of these few clips here on the side. We have to be careful because these are like 30 years old, almost. And we don't want to break them. Okay. 
Now I've seen this in video, so I know what I'm gonna find inside. I guess, unless somebody's been there already. But I don't think so. And there we go. So this is the circuit board inside, but it's all covered in resins and we have to kind of dig out the capacitor so this is these are the three capacitors that we have to replace so first of all we have to try and take it out okay that was actually easier than expected so we're gonna wash this item before we assemble it later. And this is the bottom. So we have to find exactly where these capacitors are soldered to the board and replace them with these. I was looking for a plastic knife and I couldn't find, but I found this plastic uh, fork. So hopefully we can and fuse it to remove the resins around the capacitors and have to dig a little bit it's gonna take a while All right, so we clean them more or less around here and at the back. And now we have the terminals exposed and we're ready to start desoldering them. I got these two, which I, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to use properly, but let's try it. This is to suck the solder from the terminals. But before that, something very important we have to not hear the polarity of the capacitors. I'll show you on one of the new ones. They're much smaller, but they are the same. So um, you see the white strip here, that's the negative side. So the capacitors are 220 microfarads, 25 volts, 105 degrees Celsius. Even though like the size-wise they're different, they are the same, that's what is here. 220 microfarads, 25 volts, and it says it here, 105 Celsius. So they are the exact same thing. So, like I said, I bought the pack of five for uh, $7 or something like that. So let's see if we're gonna be able to unsolder that or desolder. Let's start with this one. Not sure I did anything. Hmm. It actually did work. I don't know if you can see here. This one is almost loose. Okay. Okay, first one is out. Okay, so I'm gonna clean here a little bit now that I can. And let's install a new one. So the negative was in this on this side. So I'm gonna just put it in there all the way. I just put my knife underneath to hold it up. 
Now we need solder, right? Okay, and I don't have side powder, so I'm gonna use this huge nail trimmer. Okay. Improvised shop. <laughs> okay. One is done. Two more to go. All right, all three capacitors are replaced now. They're all the negative side is facing me. And yeah, that's it. Now all that's left is to reseal these squares. We're gonna see how we're gonna do that. And when I look at the old ones, like this one, there's nothing wrong with it. This one, there's nothing wrong with it. But this one, you can see how it exploded internally. So definitely that was our problem. Hopefully the only problem. So let's seal this and then, and then we're gonna have to go to the car, install it and see if the computer is gonna communicate this time. And actually it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. We're ready to reseal it. I'm gonna use just plain silicone here. It says 100% silicone. I'm hoping that it's gonna hold. It's gonna seal properly. Oh, it's not poked. Can't use that. It's dry as a bone. Can't seal anything with that. <laughs> Anybody wants a block of silicon? A cylinder of silicon? Nice. Anyways, that's been sitting for the last five years probably <laughs> in my house. So anyways, I'm gonna go buy another tube of silicon. All right, we got this. Again, 100% mono silicon. Let's see how this is gonna work. I'm just gonna overfill it and we're gonna put it inside the case so we can do the other side. All my kids are home now, so you, you're gonna hear them eventually. Sorry about that. Okay, and now we can feel the rest here. <laughs> Maybe the remote. Making sure that it's all over, everywhere. All right, that's it. Now we can cover it. Well, not yet because my cover is still wet actually. I'm gonna try to seal here at the side too. Alright, and now we can. I just decided to seal the ends too, so hopefully, water can't get in. And that's it. Now, the last thing to do is to put the cover on. And actually, it goes like this first, right? And that's how we took it apart. Tuck, tuck. And that's it. We're gonna let it sit overnight. And uh, one of these days we have to go to the shop and see if we did anything and if the Jeep is going to start with it. All right, it's a few days later and we are in the shop now for a Hi. test. And I have a helper here. 
Hi. Hi. What's I'm your Jacob. name? Hi, I'm Jacob. How old and are you? I'm four. Oh. And are you helping me today? Yes, and I, I want to show you this car. This car is a red Jeep. Yes, and red we, Jeep. We, we want to work on it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to plug it in. And we're not even going to mount it on the firewall. And we're going to go see if we have a chicken engine light when, when we turn the ignition on and fingers crossed it's exciting i hope that this time she's gonna start okay so now we're just gonna connect the battery <laughs> we're just gonna connect the battery and we'll see what will happen remember we have troubles here with the ground cable yeah, we also so do have that. That's why I'm jumping into this. Okay. Let's go. Okay, the moment of truth, turn the ignition on. Yes, we have check engine light. <laughs> and guess what? I can hear the fuel pump. Good. So I'm gonna honk the horn. <laughs> The battery is too low. There you go! Yay, what a day! <laughs> we fixed the car. Okay, hold on. I see we have more tools. I can't really tell, but you know what? I'm gonna go start it real quick and we will check which pulley is not turning here. Okay, so we have oil pressure, that's good. And you saw that the alternator is what doesn't spin. So it was, my guess was right. So we have to see if we can un unseize this alternator or what we can do about it. I don't see the tensioner. All right, so I looked it up online and it turns out that under this pump here, this is for the power steering pump, under it, there's a tensioner that controls the angle of this pump and that's how you tighten and loosen the belt. But for this reason, I have to remove the air cleaner and stuff. And I'm thinking maybe just because I'm not really here to work today i just wanted to run the start the jeep and make it run for a while and uh i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try with this boat i'm just gonna remove this boat and i'm gonna try to loosen the belt from the alternator if that doesn't work then i'm gonna have to come some other time and do that <laughs> It's turning now, so let's see if that helped. All right, before we put the nut on, I'm going to start it again to see no, if it is going to turn this time or not. So 
that's another thing fixed. So we're gonna put the nuts before we forget. And then the next thing is we're gonna check the coolant because there's no coolant in the rod. So I'm just gonna add water for now and uh, we will see how much we add. Hopefully it's not gonna leak from anywhere. And uh, then we're gonna go and try and drive it to the hoist so we can lift it in the air and check the frame because that's my main goal. I wanna see what's the real condition of the frame. So let me assemble this and we're gonna go from there. All right, so I installed the computer where it belongs and the reservoirs. I also changed here a little bit the configuration, which I believe this is the original configuration where the ground is connected directly to the firewall and then on the firewall there's another wire going down to the engine and uh, and then a water ground support there. I don't think this was necessary, I removed it and also removed it. So everything I'm doing right now is temporarily just to make it start and drive and we can assess it properly and then of course we're gonna do everything as it should be. So now I'm gonna add water. Like I said, that's temporarily. At a later date, we're gonna um, flush the system and fill it up with antifreeze. But for now, it's gonna be just water. Let's see how much we're gonna have to add. Oops. Hopefully it's not gonna leak out. Oh, that wasn't much, that's good. So we basically added like not even a liter, which is good. So it wasn't empty. That's good. So let's start it and let it run for a while. There's a little whining, I believe it's from the alternator, but we're gonna take care of everything. I think she runs pretty good. Hi! doesn't smoke that's what it came what came out but I guess that was just water so sounds really good so let's see if we can go on a little drive now so let's see if she tries so I haven't tried that thing. She runs, she drives pretty well. I went first and second gear, didn't go too fast. So we're gonna actually now drive it on the lift and check her underneath. 
Ta -da. What does it need? Oh, so it needs a good rinse and then we're gonna be done. <laughs> yeah. so, All right, so now we are at, on the hoist and we can take a good look. And of course, it's not nice. It's not nice at all. So that's the first point of interest here. So we need definitely a kit, repair kit for this front area and I think we have enough room to work here and then on this side somebody already has done a repair but I think we should order our and we should order a proper kit and do everything that we need to do here and then let's go on the left side keep going here I don't know it doesn't look too bad We ordered this filter, we have a new one. Here this point doesn't look too bad. And then the rear end, of course, we already saw that it is in a bad condition. We need a new cover for the tank. Definitely. Uh, this side is worse. <laughs> I don't know if you see there. The frame is missing completely. So I know it wasn't really safe to drive that, but I did. This mount is supposed to be mounted on the frame, but it's not anymore because the frame doesn't exist. But I think here in the high port, in the high area, there's no much issue. I mean, we're gonna have to use our, what is it called? The needle scaler and scale the whole frame and we will see. But for now, I think this is pretty good. Jacob, I'm talking here. Yeah, only the front, all the way in the front and all the way in the back is the rare the, are the areas that we want to repair yeah anyway something else i noticed just now probably while i was driving it i hit the brakes a little bit too hard i guess and i think this brake line exploded on me so we have to replace a brake line i guess from here where does it go yeah Oh, so it's a short brake line, but you know, when you start with brake lines, they just go all over the place. <laughs> so if this one is gone, obviously this one is going to be gone too, but we can replace them. Anyways, guys, I think it's about time to end this video here. Our goal was to start the car, see if it drives, see how it runs. I think the engine runs great. We can do, uh, at a later date, we can do a compression test and all that good stuff. But for now, I think we had enough and we're gonna leave it here and I'll see you in the next video. So definitely there are gonna be more videos coming about this car because I'm definitely gonna repair the frame and hopefully I'm gonna drive this car in the winter, hopefully. Anyways, I know it's not a Triumph video and my channel is mostly about Triumph so far, but we take a little turn and we're going to start showing a Jeep and who knows what else in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for commenting and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. So, bye. Oh no, not yet because I want to show them one more thing. So here's like some dust. That's <laughs> Okay, so let's go wash your hands and go home. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>